as some people have discovered, I'm not that sh- Really? But you're getting a deal today, because I'm half his age and twice as good looking. So, <laughs> that's a matter of opinion, everybody said. Everybody thought, I know. I know what's going through everybody's mind. But I thought this joke, everybody knows me, and I like things, but I thought this j- joke here was so appropriate for the time. It says, at the fair of the gate, St. Peter greeted the minister and the congressman. And gave them their room assignments. And he said, Pastor, here are the keys to one of our nicest, nicest efficiency units. Enjoy. Well and good in her end. And he said, and for you, Mr. Congressman, the keys to our finest penthouse suite. And the minister slammed his key down and he said, Look, after all I've done, put in all this time. And St. Peter said, Listen. Said ministers up here are dying and up. Said, but this is the first congressman I ever did see. <laughs> so if somebody came to the congressman, I apologize. <laughs> but it's still funny. <laughs> this morning, the, 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 God's given me a topic of the same three plays. Same three plays. And anybody that knows me very well knows that I'm a sports fan. I enjoy sports. I enjoy playing them. I used to enjoy them a whole lot more before it took a whole lot more out of me to play them. Uh, but but how many people here are sports fans this morning? Sports fans? Everybody likes sports. Can take it or leave it. Yeah, uh, but what if, you're, if the opponent of your team this week were to only run three plays? The opponent of your team would only run three plays, and your team knew what those three plays were. Do you think they have a pretty good chance to win? What do you think? Do you think they would? I think they would, right? If there's only three plays, if we're going to run three plays, and your defense knew exactly what those three plays were, I think your team would have a pretty good chance of winning. But in Scripture, our enemy, or our opponent, or better yet, Satan, the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, really only has three plays in his playbook as well. If you break it down, he really only has three plays in his playbook as well. And he's been running those same three plays, executing those same three plays with success, for thousands of years now. Now I'm not trying to overwhelm you with the sports analogies or talking about sports this morning, but I do love sports. It says John Wooden and Vince Lombardi. Does anybody know who those people are? Jason, who are those two people? Famous coaches. Famous coaches. One, Vince Lombardi, coach for who? Green Bay Packers Packers won several championships in his day. He was was listed as one of the most, one of the best coaches of all times in the NFL. John Wooden, coach for UCLA. UCLA won nine championships, I think. He's one of the most winningest coaches of of all time in his in his era in college basketball. Both very brilliant minds in the coaching aspect. But both being very brilliant, neither were very extravagant in their coaching abilities. They were both successful because of their execution of the simple plays. Said John Wooden almost never looked at an opponent's game film before he played. He never (laughs) scouted another team He would just tell his team before they went out that we're going to do what we do and we're going to do it better than they do. And with that motto and with that coaching ability of the the way he made things simple, he won nine national championships. But everybody that played at UCLA knew exactly what UCLA was going to do. But they still couldn't stop them because they knew 
in those three, those areas that they worked at that they were better than everybody else. They were better when they come to rebound, and they were better when it come to defense. They were better when it come to shooting the ball. But it didn't matter what you did against them, because they were still successful at those those things. Now, don't take me wrong. I'm not comparing comparing Vince Lombardi and John Wooden to the devil this morning. The comparison comes saying their strategies are simple. And with the Satan, there's only three distinct plays that he keeps running. And he keeps running them over. Because why? He's very good at it. He's done it for thousands of years. He's practiced them on very many people. In Genesis chapter 3, you don't have to turn your Bible there, but Adam and Eve had been formed. They're now set in the Garden of Eden, and, and God had given Adam and Eve tremendous authority over the area there. He says that, that not only to name the animals, but rule them and, 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 and multiply the land in which I've given you. But don't do one thing. <coughs> and what was that one thing? Eat of the fruit. This participation, I, I, when I stop, it did say something. Eat of that fruit. But what did the devil start doing right then? Tempting. Started tempting them, didn't he? Started tempting them. He said, he said, he doesn't want you to eat of that fruit. Because if you eat of that fruit, it'll make you like God. It'll make you be higher than Him. He doesn't want you to eat that because He wants to be ruled over you. That so crafty serpent started all that said began to whisper those subtle things to Eve, right? Began to whisper, whisper those subtle things. But Adam and Eve committed the original sin because of what? A lie, was it? They committed that original sin because it was a lie. After taking notes, remembering a key point, this is one of them here that you can write down or, or lock away. Everyone here in this building has seen it. Everybody here in this building, at some point in time in their life, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We believe that this morning? Amen. We have to believe that we've come to that point in our lives in order for us to be saved. No. We have to come to that point in our lives. And everybody every now and then still commits sin every now and then in the flesh, don't they? Why do we do that? Because of a lie. We commit those sins. We committed those sins because of a lie that Satan has told us. Just like he told Eve there, those lies because she saw. She saw. It says Eve's eyes are the ones at work here. When she saw the fruit was good and pleasing to the eye. Number two, example two, the children of Israel. We've done a study on that on Wednesday night. Remember that? The children of Israel, Israel, Israel were called out of Egypt and were led into the desert for 40 years, right? Everybody remember that story? Remember something of that story? Were called out into the, and, and wandered in the desert for 40 years. And I'll just sum this up a great big chunk of reading right here. They failed at that miserably. A three-week venture took them 40 years to complete. Now, if anybody's ever went on a trip with Dad, he's kind of like that. But a three-week adventure failed at it for over 40 years. That same playbook that the devil used on Adam and Eve, he used on the children of Israel. That same playbook that the devil used on Adam and Eve and the children of Israel is still the same three plays. The same playbook that he uses on you and I today. You say, but Mike, I, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I seem to do that the, that the devil seems to get one up. That's because he's crafty. He knows what it's going to take. If you've got your Bibles with you this morning, you can turn over to 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 is what we're going to read. And you'll have them on the screen if you don't have your Bible. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 this morning. Verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If 
any man love the world, and the love, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Those three things right there in verse 16 is the same three plays that the devil has been running and been successful at for years and years and years. Let's break that down a little farther. Lust of the flesh. We live in a society that tells us just if it feels good, do it. Don't we? We live in a society where the devil tells us if it feels good, do it. Or we say to ourselves, well, it's what I want to do, and if no one likes it, then they can just get over it. Has anybody ever heard attitudes or had attitudes like that? If I'm, ha if I'm not happy, then there must be something wrong with everyone else. Or this is a good one, even in churches. You're not getting me what I need here at church, so I need to go somewhere else where I can be fed. Is that not the lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh says that, that something is wrong out here in the world. Something is wrong because what I want is not happening. What my personal being wants. The lust of the flesh means whatever feels good, do it. Lust of the flesh says that 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 if, it, if I think that it's okay with me, go right ahead. Lust of the eyes. The devil tempts us with something that we desire. Not taking into account the effect that it will have on anybody else. If we can see it, then we can get it. If we can get it, and do what we want. That's the attitude that we have. That's that lust of the eyes that the, that the devil tempts us with. If it looks good to us, then we've already worked this out with God, which is a lie. I put that in bold print right here. If anybody wants to say that. A lie. It's a lie that we tell ourselves to make ourselves feel better about doing it, right? I've already worked this out with God. He's okay with it. The truth is, you probably never even discussed it with them, or you probably wouldn't even mention it in the first place. I've already worked this out with God. He's okay with it. We have an understanding of <coughs> lie. We've not even discussed it with him at all. I wonder if we sit back and really ask, started asking God about it, if we do half the stuff in our life that we say he's okay, that he's okay with it. Probably not, would we? If we sit down and really question God about whether or not we should do things and something in our life, if we sit to God and said, you guide me where you want me to go. If you want me to do this, then Lord, I'll do it. If we took Him into consideration, we would have to think that we we'll probably do it. And number three, the pride of life. The pride of life is anything that's of the world. Arrogance, pride in self, boasting. My favorite, and this is used all too often, well, if those people are going to have an act like that, then I'm just as good as they are, and I'm going to. You may have heard that statement before? I've heard it. Some of us may have even used it at one point in time in our life. <laughs> Let me tell you, folks, that's just the devil being successful in calling his play. Because I'd hate to know that I missed heaven. I'd hate to know that I missed heaven because of somebody else's attitude. I'd hate to know that I busted hell wide open because I lived in that state. Folks, this morning... The devil's been calling those plays very well for many years. <coughs> He's been tempting us with those three things for many years. His playbook is old and rattled and tattered and torn, and he don't even have to look at it anymore because he's so good at it. But friends, this morning, I start to sound like that. I want to say, listen, friends. This morning, I want to tell you about a person 
that was tempted, that had that playbook against him. Even read about it one instance for 40 days, he was tempted in the wilderness. Everybody remember that story? Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness there. But you know what? Unlike you, unlike I, unlike a lot of the other people here in the world, unlike everybody here in the world, the devil's temptations, the devil lost that game. The plays that he was calling in that game of life, he was unsuccessful. The plays that he was calling, the audibles, if you're a football fan, the audibles that he was calling at the line was unsuccessful. Wouldn't you like to have a coach like that on your team? Wouldn't you like to have somebody on your side that has went up against the enemy, the only one to ever go up against the enemy and win Throughout his whole life, one time after time after time after time. And folks, this morning, he's asking you to come and be on his day. Now, I, want, I don't want to take it as, 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 as literal as, as being on a team winning and losing. I don't want to discount it by by any means of, of, of calling it like that because it's a serious thing. It's a serious thing this morning. We all know that without God on our side, the devil can be very successful in his play call. Those three plays that he keeps calling, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, He's very successful at times. But if you've got the coach of your team, that's when I'm against him. I said, devil, you get behind us. We're going to miss you once, we're going to miss you again. Folks, this morning, as we stand.
I'm just as good as they are. I'll be there too. Time is cheap, folks. I've heard that my whole life. Never got to lose it in the sermon, but time is cheap. Thank you.